How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine. This is part 17. Drilling the holes in the link arms and machining the reversing lever. In the last episode I showed in great detail how I cleaned up these link arms and it took quite a while. But now they're looking like they're supposed to look. They still need holes drilling in the ends of them. And how am I going to do that? Like this. I put the link arm in the chuck rotate it and check that it's square at top and bottom. It did take considerably longer than this to get the link arm to be square in the chuck. I'm not in any big hurry to power up the lathe. First of all I'm turning the chuck by hand to rotate the part and make sure that the centre drill is exactly in the centre. And when I'm happy that everything is OK, I power up the lathe and first of all drill through with the centre drill followed by a twist drill, one imperial size less than 3 16 which is the size of the hole, and then I use a 3 16 reamer to finally ream the hole to the proper size. I'm still getting plenty of expert comments coming in. Some of them are good and some of them are a little bit bizarre. This is neither one or the other. A viewer said that I mustn't spin pieces of metal off-centre like this at a high speed. And the viewer suggested that if the piece of metal flew out of the chuck, it will stick in my head. Well, maybe it would knock some sense into me, I don't know. Thankfully, I've managed to go through most of my life without any pieces of metal sticking out of my head in a random fashion. The reason for this misunderstanding is that the lathe is often running very fast. Very fast indeed, because the video is speeded up, as it is at the moment. Now and again, I return it back to normal speed, to show a slower operation. For instance, the reaming. This is in real time. Very, very slowly. One of the reasons for speeding up the video is that some of the operations in engineering or model engineering are incredibly boring and I don't want any of my viewers going into a coma and just slumping forward on the desk and therefore attracting attention to the fact that instead of working they are watching my videos. So that's why I speed up the videos, to just make sure that people have gainful employment for a longer period. It's now time to repeat the process on the other casting. And as you can see, I level it up with the square, and here we go with the normal procedure, yet again. Another viewer wrote in and said, Do you follow the drawings or do you just wing it? <laughs> I thought that was quite a good comment, really. No, I don't wing it, really. For instance, on the reversing gear drawing, between the centres of these holes is supposed to be 3 and 7 eighths of an inch, and indeed it is 3 and 7 eighths of an inch, as can be clearly seen here on my measuring stick. And does my village idiot's approach to model engineering work? Well, I think so, because there's a 3 16 reamer stuck in one end, and a 3 16 twist drill stuck in the other end, and they seem to fit perfectly. In my opinion, they are slightly tight, so what I'm going to do is just run the reamer through like this, to make sure that these links are not tight when they're connected to the expansion link. This old 3 16 reamer that I generally use for these sort of jobs is quite blunt anyway, so it does cut a little bit undersize. When I put some 3 16 of an inch diameter studs through, they fit perfectly. The front surfaces of the link arms still need a little bit more cleaning up, but I've had quite enough of cleaning up castings for today, so I think I'll move over now and have a look at the reversing lever. I need to drill and ream a hole through the centre of this 5 16 of an inch in diameter. I drilled the link arms on the Boxford lathe, but I'm having to move over to my old Smart and Brown lathe to do the reversing lever because the Boxford won't swing it. The centre height of the Boxford spindle is too little for the length of this arm. The drilling of this part is almost identical to the drilling of the link arms. First of all, I use a centre drill, followed by a twist drill, which is one imperial size less than the final size that I need, and then I slow down the lathe by putting it in back gear, and then slowly feed in a 5 16 of an inch diameter reamer. This isn't a precision part, it's a lever that fits on a shaft, but it needs to be what I would call an engineering fit on the shaft, definitely not a rattle fit. It's going to be pinned to the shaft with a taper pin. So if the lever is a good fit on the shaft to start with, the taper pin is just the icing on the cake. Now I need to machine the other side of the lever. I'm using some Loctite 603, which I'm applying to this piece of 5 16 of an inch diameter bar that's sticking out of the chuck. Then I fit the lever and give it about 5 minutes for the Loctite to grab. 
Normally, if I was doing a job like this with a part on a mandrel, I would use a life centre to support the outer part of the centre shaft, but as this is such a small part, I really don't need to do that. To start the process, I'm taking a longitudinal cut down the piece of bar, and very carefully I then start to take a cut on the front surface of the reversing lever, and this is to check that the reversing lever is firmly bonded to the bar, and indeed it is. So I quickly measure it, once again I use a ruler for this, and some viewers have said, why don't I use the marked graduations on the lathe hand wheels to measure the distances? Well, it's easier with a ruler, it's quicker, and I can actually see the ruler because the graduations are quite small and I have to put my headset on with the magnifying lens. So really a lot of the things I do, I do because I find it to be the simpler method. And in what seems to be no time at all, the reversing lever's centre boss is cut to exactly the right length, which is three quarters of an inch. And now the boss is the right length from front to back. A longitudinal cut just tidies up the centre boss. In order to get a good finish on this part, I put a brand new lathe tool in the tool post. I bought a full set of these the other week from Blackgate's Engineering, and then I found a load I already had in a box. So now I've got loads of them. Over now to the outer part of the workshop, and I've put an old pipe union in the vise. It's time to remove the 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter mandrel, from the reversing lever, and I'm doing this as usual by heating up the part with the blowtorch until the Loctite 603 gives way. And it doesn't take too much heat to destroy the bond, you certainly do not want to heat the part to red heat, and with very little effort I can tap the centre mandrel out of the reversing lever. And now it's time for the big cleanup to remove any marks on the reversing lever. I put the pipe union in the vise so that when I used the hammer to tap the mandrel out of the reversing lever, the reversing lever didn't get damaged by the edges of the vice jaws. This clean-up job really did take a long time. First of all, I used the horizontal 4-inch belt sander, followed by the vertical 1-inch belt sander, followed by a flapper wheel, and in between that, various grades of sandpaper. Sometimes I used oil on the sandpaper, sometimes I used water, it was a bit of an experiment to see which method gave the best finish in the shortest time, and the answer to that was none of them, it took ages. I'm sure some experts out there will tell me that I'm doing it all wrong, and there are better ways of doing it, probably requiring large and expensive machinery, but this is the way I did it. And it's not perfect, but it's looking okay. And here is the cleaned up reversing lever, fitted to the engine in its approximate position. I need to cross drill the reversing lever and the drop arm, and then taper the drilled holes by using a taper reamer to take taper pins, and that will hold the whole assembly together. But that's it for now, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. And before I go, I would like to thank everyone who's joined Patreon. I really do appreciate your support, and it really helps me free up some time to make more videos. Thank you.